What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Palais Revival. We are about to start a circumnavigation of New Zealand. We are here in Auckland. We've just finished a 50 person Patreon meetup here at my hometown and we've decided to showcase New Zealand a little bit. So we're going to take the next two months to circumnavigate New Zealand anti-clockwise. Our first stop is Great Barrier Island. And then from there, we're going to go up around Cape Reinga, all the way down the west coast of New Zealand to Stewart Island. And then up the other side, hopefully we're going to catch the Sail GP in Christchurch. Perfect start by Canada there. Got the room inside, it's really France. tight. Oh, oh France does get a penalty. And then um, back to Auckland to finish a full lap. After that, we're going to do a quick little yard period and then head back up into the Pacific and across to Asia. So some crazy exciting things happening at the moment. If you guys have been following for a while, you know that all of my family live on Great Barrier Island. Every single thing that ends up on that island has to either be flown there or taken across on the barge. So, my family have taken the opportunity to use Parley as a barge and we're transporting so much stuff out there for them. So, we'll take you to see our family home out there and we have a few special, special, special patrons who have stayed on from our event to do part of the circumnavigation with us. We got Bob, Liz and the chosen one. Otherwise, otherwise known as the A-Team. Oh, baby. <laughs> We're not a sailboat anymore, we're a barge. So if you don't know, the Chosen One was the one who sailed across the Pacific with us from Mexico all the way to Tahiti. Bob is the previous owner of this boat. He came to Mexico and sailed on this boat and then we went to the BVI's and sailed on his boat. It's such a cool story. He came up with the name Parlay, originally for his bar. But we've got one more visitor. She's walking down the dock now. She is Sarah. She owns a wetsuit company here called Seventh Wave and they are made and manufactured in, in New Zealand here. So super happy to get these wetsuits on us and promote a New Zealand company doing great things down in Christchurch. That's wow. cute. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Girl. Oh my God. Is that Jamie? This is, yeah. I'm obsessed. <laughs> sick. Yeah. Love That's it. So sick. By the way, Jamie was too lazy. Yeah to pick a color for his wetsuit. So when you go online, it's fully customizable. So you choose which color uh, you want the legs, the arms, everything. So we sort of designed our own. So I sort of told Sarah, design the most loud and proud and outrageous wetsuit that you want. I suggested pink. She said that was a little bit too much, but let's see what he's got. There he is. <laughs> We were about to head to the South Island of New Zealand. This is the furthest south Parley has ever gone. Below New Zealand is Antarctica, so we were definitely going to be using these wetsuits regularly. And how do people get a hold of one? Seventhwave.co.nz. We sell online mostly if you're overseas, and we do ship. You ship worldwide? Worldwide. It's That's like a so warm, worldwide. sunny day in yeah. the summer. It's the warmest day. And we're not in the water, <laughs> yeah. so they're hot. Yeah. <laughs> To start the circumnavigation. Oh! Hey. This is officially, we're about to push off the dock. This is officially the start of our New Zealand circumnavigation. I haven't personally seen a series on YouTube that highlights this. This is a big deal. Got a bottom bottle moe from the chosen one. Okay, let's untie the lines. Looks like your dad's gonna start up a drag strip over there on the fair <laughs> There we go, folks. We have officially left the dock. Pretty exciting stuff. Kind of just crept up on us out of nowhere. We've got the A team on board. And we're gonna have an absolute blast, I'm sure. The first place I wanted to take everyone to was Manawar Bay on Waiheke Island, which is about 25 miles away. It was a very strange feeling leaving Auckland so soon after arriving, but we were committed to getting around the whole country, so we had no time to waste. Beautiful boat! We have officially left. Auckland City. Hope to be back in about two months. 
This could be one of the biggest adventures we've ever been on. This is crazy. We're going into really low latitudes. Very unpredictable weather. Crazy weather systems coming through. And we're going to have to have our wits about us. Crazy. I've never been to New Zealand other than a few hours, you know, six months ago. So I'm looking forward to it. I hear it's quite spectacular going down the west coast. We're in the middle of a race and I got one, two, three, four, five, six boats coming straight towards me. And I'm on a port tack. <laughs> so I'm going to have to I shoot the gap here without getting in the way. It's, it's wonderful to be on the boat and, and moving out. Yeah, I can't wait to have a few days of sailing. If you've only just joined us, <laughs> you may not know who this guy is. Yeah. This is Bob. This is the OG of Parlay. <laughs> so he owned it when Hurricane Irma came through the BVIs and what happened? I teed it up for you. Right? <laughs> you yeah, bought it up for us? We bought the boat in 15 and we lost it in 17 and Colin found it in 18 and here we are in 24 back in the homeland. Just happy to be back on the boat. Puts a smile on my face every time. Here we are, this is Man of War Bay, Man of War Vineyard. 38 years old, from Auckland, and I've never been here before. It's gonna close in about an hour and a half, so probably got time for a glass of wine. Yeah, I'm thirsty. Oh, I have wine. Man of War Bay is on the eastern coast of Waiheke Island and was named by Captain James Cook himself in 1769. It is spread out across an estate of 1,800 hectares and is New Zealand's only beachfront wine tasting area, which makes it so popular for yachts in Auckland. So the food was delicious and the wine was flowing, which may have had a little part to play in the little mishap at the table behind us. We were all in hysterics and they were kind enough to share the footage with us. Right, well that was pretty nice. Man of War, vineyard. Wine was good. The location was amazing. It's just built for cruises. Look at all these boats. But anyway, tomorrow we're going to go to Great Barrier, which is 34 miles from here. So we're going to go under and clean the hull. We're, I think we're losing about a knot right now because the boat's been sitting in that marina in Cracker Bay for a month and the growth is pretty significant. But yeah, time to get wet. But we get to use our new wetsuits. You Make sure your hands are well protected here. Don't want any finger fingertips showing. How's the wetsuit? Yeah, it's really good. It's nice and warm. My face and feet are cold. But the wetsuit hasn't got any water in it yet, it's really nice. It's like a dry suit! Yeah. What the hell? I just pissed too, it hasn't come out. No, I didn't. <laughs> I can't even go under. I can't clean the bottom, sorry guys. <laughs> Free diving's not happening in Holy this. shit. Well, wow. I'm not even joking, like it's such a good fit I'm that floating. no water is even getting in. Oh my god, but this would have been slowing us up so much. There's like a full layer of like carpet under the hull. This is gonna take a couple of hours. Morning guys, so we are heading to Great Barrier Island where all my family are awaiting us for their delivery. This is the first time we've been down here, like we've always been in the tropics, so this is the first time we've had to actually worry about, or even think about. Great white sharks, they are swimming around New Zealand, everywhere. We went on the website the other day that's tracking a few of the great whites and they're just doing laps around New Zealand. There's a lot of them around Stewart Island where we're going. Um, so I couldn't help but start to think about that a little bit as I was cleaning the hull.
doing eight knots. That's where we're going. That's uh, the Coromandel Peninsula. So we're going to go around that, we go slight dog leg to, uh, to the east, and we'll be out towards Great Barrier Island. It's about 45 miles from Auckland City. There's a population of about 800 permanent residents. That'll go up over a thousand over the summer like now. And then now my brother lives out there and my sister lives out there. And they've all become locals, except me. I feel like the outlier when I go out there. We were coming into Colville Strait, which can be a seriously gnarly patch of water. The current rips between Great Barrier Island and the Coromandel, and if you get the wind against it, you better have your wits about you. But today's conditions were absolutely perfect. A solid breeze from behind us meant ideal spinnaker sailing. And with the current I just mentioned going with us, we cruise along towards the barrier at an impressive pace. Warm? All right, bundled up. <laughs> Cold now, this is yeah, no, North it. Island. Right we're in the South Island. You've seen my dog, he got off his boat somewhere and we can't find him. <laughs> So we've just sailed past the Coromandel. That is actually part of the mainland New Zealand and it wraps all the way around, um, sort of around Waiheke and everything and ends up back in Auckland. But from here, we just went past Port Jackson. From there to Trifina, where we're going, is 12 miles. But we've been doing 10 knots for a while now, so we're absolutely flying. We've got 22 knots behind us. Spinnaker's just sitting perfectly and the current waves and the wind are all pushing us straight into Great Barrier Island. So I wish every sail was like this. Those ended up being famous last words. As we were coming into Trifina Harbour, a group of dolphins came to welcome us in. How big they are! That 22 knot breeze behind us was giving us a beautiful 12 knots of apparent wind. And I was literally sitting there hoping the rest of our circumnavigation could be just like this. I was so excited to be bringing Parlay out to the barrier, where I'd spent my childhood coming down this exact route on the ferry all those years ago. But as we approached Shoal Bay, and we're literally about to bring the spoonica down, something horrible happened. The tack line of the spinnaker, which is connected to a pad eye on the starboard bow of the boat, ripped the deck clean away from the hull, and sent the spinnaker flying out to our port side. We acted fast and were able to douse the spinnaker straight away, but the damage had already been done. It's ripped up! The what? whole bow has come up! That was insane. The whole bow where the deck is just peeled up and the, the tack line of the spinnaker was just holding it there. It's bent the bow cleat up. Never seen anything like it. It's 20 knots out here, but again, it's only about 12 knots of apparent wind, so it wasn't that much wind. Some serious damage right there. It'll never ever look the same. It's cracked it straight through the non skid. Never a dull moment on parlay. I wonder what kind of material would be better than fiberglass for a boat. Aluminum. 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 You can say what you want about Lagoon's construction, but I'll stick to the facts. This is a deck that's glued down over the hull, and it has one, two, three, four screws holding that deck down with a bit of glue and they have got a pad eye mounted there for the spinnaker that's not something that we've made up and this is what's happened well some of them are built so the front doesn't fall off at all well, wasn't this built so the front wouldn't fall off well obviously not how do you know well because the front fell off and the entire deck was lifted straight up well there are uh, regulations governing the uh, materials that they can be made of what materials well cardboard's out and no cardboard derivatives like paper no paper no string, no sellotape. Look at the cleat. Spent the cleat in the process. 12 knots of apparent wind. That is totally fine for a spinnaker. And now I've got to rebuild the bow. But Senator Collins, why did the front book fall off? Well, a wave hit it. A wave hit it? A wave hit the ship. Is that unusual? Oh, yeah. At sea, 
chance in a million. Frustrating. So we proceeded to unload a full truckload for my family, but I was irritated that this was how our circumnavigation of New Zealand would begin. We had 2,000 miles to go to get round the country, and this was a major setback. Okay, so we've just grabbed the mooring on the other side of the bay. We're about to do some boat work. A lot of you guys, literally yesterday, someone came up and said they used to watch our channel when we did boat work, now they don't. Well, now you got some boat work. We got some fiberglass, we got to grind inside that locker. Um, but I think this is a three stage repair. It is literally just glued and screwed, not fiberglass at all. So by the end of this repair, that bow is going to be stronger than that one came out of the factory. So we're going to do all of the repairs underneath with epoxy because we don't need to gel coat that. We're going to glue it back down with thickened epoxy, not the silicon shit that they've used. And then we're going to glass underneath with epoxy and fiberglass and then glass the top with polyester so that we can put gel coat on top of polyester on the nice white stuff on top. So here we go, back to the grind. The worst part about this is going to be climbing down into the forepeak and grinding the join between the hull and the deck so that we can glass, we can tab that whole perimeter that ripped up. We're gonna fiberglass that down with epoxy. So, not too difficult, just it's gonna be, <coughs> someone's gonna be itchy. It's probably gonna be another. It's been a while. Ladies and gentlemen, he's softy. <laughs> Here's the guy standing, standing in the salon. Okay guys, so the first step is to clean up all of the seeker flex so that we're able to start grinding. I then grind off any cracked bits of fiberglass because I want the deck to be able to sit flush again. Where I'm going to be gluing the deck down onto the hull with epoxy, I grind off all of the gel coat so that I get a super strong mechanical bond between the two surfaces. This also applies to the underside of the deck as well. Okay, that was the easy part. Remember that was just silicon on gel coat with four screws. So this is gonna be 100 times stronger. Um, but now I gotta go climb down the hole and grind away. Where it, where it cracked, there's splinters of fiberglass and it's gonna hold, hold it out a little bit. I'm trying to clear everything away so that it just comes down and sits perfectly flat and then I can tab it in from the bottom. So yeah, I've got to climb down there and I'm just going to clean up that whole edge and maybe do some more grinding where I can have my body out of the hole but reaching in and, and grinding it so that I'm not in a cloud of dust. And then we should be gluing and hopefully glassing the underside today. And then it'll be, then it'll be watertight at least. But yeah, all that grinding I did looks really good. I'm just going to clean this up more, put a, uh, a shamper there, scarf that back, and then we can glass all across here. We'll uh, take that cleat off and then we can glass all down there, and then all around there. We took the seat off so we don't have the bolts in the way, so we're going to be glassing this to this. So we have a nice tab all the way. We'll have to take this cleat off as well. and. So now for the horrible part, I'm gonna scarf this out. That's not gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> 